to play the shitty games that suck ass. He'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diarrhea dump in his ear. He'd rather eat the rotten asshole of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer. He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Atari. Nerd. He's the angry video game nerd. Once again, let's go back to 1983. You walk into a video arcade, what do you see? Games that look like this, or this, or this. Yeah, it sure got everybody's attention, and it really stuck out amongst all the other games. This was Dragon's Lair, the adventures of Dirk the Daring who has to rescue a princess from a dragon. It was more like an interactive movie than a video game. Basically, you just watch the cartoon play, and when a certain obstacle would appear, then you press the right button at the right time to see whether you die or you continue playing. Now, the first time playing, there was no way to know what was going to happen, so the only way players would learn was to keep putting quarters in the machine. And once you spent like a truckload of quarters and you knew how to go through the whole game, then you could pretty much beat it every time after that and just show off to everybody. So, while there wasn't much to the gameplay, it was groundbreaking in the fact that it was one of the first games to use a laser disc making the use of motion video and feature animation by Don Bluth, who, prior to Dragon's Lair, was known for his work with Disney on features such as Robin Hood, The Rescuers, and Pete's Dragon. Many games of its kind would follow, some of which were adapted on the home CD consoles, such as Time Gal and Road Adventure, which I mentioned in my Sega CD review. Now, many adaptations of Dragon's Lair would appear on several game consoles, but the one that I'm going to play is the NES version. Now, how could you put this into this? Yeah, so obviously, an NES game is technically incapable of handling this sort of motion video thing. So, what do you know? It's a side-scroller, and after all, that's what games on the 8-bit Nintendo system were best at. So, how could you go wrong? Well. Judging from all the requests I got to review this game, I'm going to pop it in and find out. Alright, my first impression is that the graphics are quite good for the NES and the character animation is well detailed, but the controls are delayed beyond belief. Did I just die by walking into the fucking door? Yeah, everything kills you. Literally, everything. Even if you stop to jump, you end up falling through the bridge. Okay, I'm going to try to kill this bat, and there I go, dead. Here I go. Dead again. If you hit down, you go into a crawling mode. Of course, it's extremely delayed, making it awkward to switch between standing and crawling. Oh, I'm really fucked now. Jump, jump! Well, we already know you can't go through the door, so I'm gonna assume you gotta kill the dragon. But what the asshole? Why can't I duck? I just wanna duck down and throw my daggers at the dragon, but no, it doesn't let you duck. Have you ever played a game where the basic controls differ depending on which side of the screen you're standing on? So, I'm gonna try to make my way to the left just so I can attack the dragon. Wow, that was close. Okay, come on, duck! Shit! Alright, here we go. Duck down, kill a dragon. Son of a ass! I'm getting real fucking mad now. Why does the gate stay open the whole time, but once you're within range, it comes down? What a tease. How the hell does the fucking thing kill you anyway? I don't care if it's a door or a medieval gate or whatever the hell it is. It's certainly not an electrical fence or something. So why is it like deadly to the touch? The rules in this game make no sense. What were they thinking? Another problem is that the dragon doesn't come up high enough to be able to hit with your dagger, unless you're squatting, but when you're squatting, the dragon stays below the bridge. It literally reacts to your every move. So, what do you do? Do you stand? Do you duck? Either way, you're fucked. The decisions to make in this game are similar to if, say you're standing in a pool full of piss, all the way up to your neck. Then somebody comes in with a bucket full of shit to dump on your head. Do you duck down under the piss, or do you just stay up and take on the shit? This game is like a cruel joke that you play on your friends. It's like, hey, you wanna play a game? Here you go, you fuckers. And, you know, it really doesn't look that hard. But once you actually play it, it's unbelievable. You jump like you're on the goddamn moon, it takes ages to turn around, and the control is so stiff, you'll wonder if your fucking controller's broken. However, I've heard that the PAL version is much smoother. 
I might have saved myself a few hundred emails by mentioning that. Now, unlike most NES games where B attacks and A jumps, this one's the opposite, which takes some time to get used to. I mean, what's with this backwards ass bullshit? But, you know what's really sad? This is the first screen of the game. I haven't even gotten past the first screen yet. I don't even want to know what the rest of the game is like. Maybe you're just supposed to walk left. Nope. Actually, if that was the case, I think I'd have to break something. Now, you know what else is bullshit? Everything kills you with only one hit. The dragon, the fireball, the moat, the door. But the bat just takes away a tiny bit of life from your life bar. Yeah, that's right, you have a life bar. I didn't even notice, but what's the point? Because everything that hits you, it kills you instantly! I can guarantee that the only way you're gonna die from this bat is if you stand absolutely still and just wait. I've clocked it. It takes 1 minute and 13 seconds for this bat to drain your energy. That's 11 hits. Well, why 10 when it can take 11? So, in order to pass this part of the game, you gotta kill the dragon. And it seems that there's only one possible spot where you can hit him. That's from the far left, where you start. But the dragon won't come out until you're halfway across the bridge. So, you gotta make your way to the dragon, then jump your way back, and then you can just barely hit the dragon, even from this distance. You just wish you can duck and hit him, but as we already know, that doesn't work because the fucking bastard won't stay up. So, you just have to be real patient, keep throwing the daggers. When he spits the fireballs, you gotta duck well in advance and just keep repeating. Of course you die with only one hit, but the dragon takes forever. This game is notorious among gamers as being one of the most frustrating games in existence. At some time or another, it seems everyone takes a shot at it. And after this review, I'm sure many more people will suffer over it, which is unfortunate, but to quote Full Metal Jacket, it's just one big shit sandwich, and we all gotta take a bite. So, finally, the dragon's dead, the door goes up, and now you got one last obstacle. Just don't fall. Oh god, don't fall. Not after that. Alright, finally we get to see something different. Now, your first obstacle here are these rocks that come flying at you. Fuck! Now, once you remember the pattern, you can get by, but then this snake comes up out of nowhere. Damn! You know, this whole game is all about trial and error. The only way to get through it is to memorize everything that happens. And once again, I'd like to stress, what's the point of having an energy bar when everything kills you with one hit? One fucking hit. Now, this is the worst. Just gotta watch the pattern. Up, down, up, down, up. Fuck, oh God. Uh, game over? Oh no. No, please, no. Man. Man, fuck that shit. Man, you think I'm gonna put myself through that again? Man. God damn it, man! Man, fuck this game, man! Man, Jesus Christ, I'd rather fucking 69 a grizzly bear while shoving King Kong up my ass! I'd rather fucking stand in the middle of a ring of monkeys as they pelt me to death with their own anal waste! Man, fuck this game, fuck it to hell, fuck it to oblivion, fuck it to damnation of mankind!